how I feel about painting has completely changed. I set myself like mental goals this year and didn't hit any of them. <laughs> I wanted to have the thing. I didn't want to do the thing. Like I wanted to have the thing. Once I'd sprayed it, I, li I just didn't want to look at it. Like I was literally like... <laughs> I think so many people suffer when at the start of the year, they're like, New Year's resolution, I'm going to do this army, like you said. Rather than um, say one day, say day one. I think if you dedicate enough time to that, every time you paint and every time you sit down, you will see massive improvement in your brush ability. New preview model for the uh, Black Library reveal show. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Good. Yeah. I, um, I think the trade-off for Tactical Rock for Tactical Squig is... Um, <laughs> it's in full is force, that. We've seen that before, haven't we? It's, it's multi-use. It's not only, for the, not only for the foot, but for the gun. So it's... it's I don't know if we've seen it for... Um, for like literally a squig. Uh, the goth rocker had a squig. Oh, it's like a squig. Yeah, and, speaker yeah. thing. Yeah, and yeah. then that the new Warcry one, or not Warcry, the Age of Sigma one. Oh, yeah, the anvil. Squig thing. anvil. So yeah, yeah they, they get about the squigs. Yeah. The multifunctional um, pets. I love it. I think it's sick. But the thought of painting it and how many details there are on it on what is not pro probably not a huge model. It kind of reminds me of um, what base is that like a. That's got to be a 50 or 50 40. Or 40. That can't be a 40. Uh, it might be. Might I don't be. Th I don't think that's a 50. I think it's that's 50. not a 40. 50. I went, 50 might, or 60. I don't think it's 60. I think it's 50. I think me in the middle. I think 50. 50 or 60. We'll call it even yeah. a 50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of that. What was the orc model where like, there's like the grot on top of like the gun? That's the new orc war boss in Mega Armor. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of that in a way. Yeah. Great model. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, but yeah, like I say, there's quite a few details. But but it, look, I'm not surprised. He's a bad moon. He's got all the gear. Like he's the they're the they're, they're the are uh, they are the the A list orc celebrities. The bad moons <laughs> with with their uh, with all their teeth. So um so yeah, he's got so much gear on him. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but it looks uh, it looks pretty hench. Is the 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 gun isn't just resting on the squig, is it? It's actually the squig oh, no. is attached. He's got a full back. Oh, he's, unit. he's bolted yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah a full, the, the squig got a full... is actually attached. How that works, I'm not sure. It's all. Do they have to? That's like a three legged race, that isn't it? Like they've got to <laughs> yeah. sort of coordinate their movements. Yeah. <laughs> he probably just picks it up, and then the squig's just sort of hanging there. That that would make more sense. Or like when you ones. hang, like when you hang a dog over like the bath, and then yeah, yeah, they start doing the feet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it just moves about by itself. So they're just, he's just running in battle and the squig thinks that it's like running, but it's not. Fair. Is that, yeah. is that when they're like when they're dreaming and they're on the side? And they, and yeah. They yeah. Like yeah. 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 He doesn't look like he skipped a uh, leg day, James. No, I didn't either this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I, I often it's have. Got a little self on it. Yeah, yeah it was good. I, 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 you served it and I returned James has it. been limping around the office yeah. all day. So, so sound like an old man coming up the stairs earlier. I was like, who's that? Oh, yeah. James. I'm still, I've still got a bit of youth in me left. But, um, but. Uh, Key word is bit. Bit. <laughs> I never said a lot. I said a bit. Yeah, no. Uh, Mr. Box from Vanguard. Uh, we, we often have sort of like zombie side weekends and like do like big like game weekends or just hang out and stuff. But every time he comes down, he drags me kicking and screaming pretty much to this, this, what he claims is one of the best gyms in the country, which is a uh, rip gym in, in Basildon. Yeah. Um, and it's a serious gym. Which he, he described it to me as, um, Warhammer world for, for gym nerds. Yeah. Apparently all the gear and the machines in there, and this isn't a plug for them. We don't know them at all whatsoever, but that, that would, all the gear and, and stuff in there. Is I always thought that ripped was, cause like we say, it's, it's local to us. Mm -hmm. I always thought that it was a chain, like a big chain. I'm not sure. But, the way that Boxy was talking about it, there's not that many of them, or that's the only one, which is yeah, bad. Oh, yeah, he the absolutely Warhammer loves world it. of gyms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, is there an exhibition hall? You just go around and look at a bunch of robots. <laughs> yeah, there, there isn't. No, no. But it, whenever whenever he comes down, he he always goes down there and always drags me along. Um, as everyone knows, he's mega into fitness and stuff. Um, now I don't mind a bit of calisthenics, lots of walking, uh, own body weight training, like pull ups, press ups, all that kind of stuff. I don't mind that. That's that's my my my, my bag. I enjoy that. Um, Trying to trying to leg press ridiculous amounts of weight is not my uh, is not my uh, my forte. Clearly, like um, Arnie, uh, an Iron Man, and uh, Mister Olympia tournaments have got nothing to worry about. I'm not looking <laughs> to uh, I'm not looking to make an entrance. Um, um, but but yeah, he um, he absolutely destroyed my legs this weekend. So so yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's like, go on, it's not that heavy. I was like, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is, trust me. Yeah, um, so yeah, 
Uh, but no, it's always good to hang out with uh, Mr. Box. And um, and uh, we had some really good games of Zombicide, which if you haven't played it, it's an amazing game. So, uh, Did so, you yeah. get any painting in with him? No, no, it was purely just hanging out, um, playing some games. We played uh, like Mansions of Madness um, and Zombicide, like Tom, one of our friends came Who's over. Who's Zombicide set, is it? It was... Well, I've got quite a few sets of some side. Box has got quite a few sets of some side. They're painted. Um, they're not. No, they're not painted. Mm. No, but it, we played one of the original ones. We played the it's it's the fantasy one, which is clearly Lord of the Rings, but not Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, it was it was quite good. It was really really good. So uh, so much so, I bought the same one because I it, it was that good. So yeah, there's yeah. nothing you need more than more miniatures, more models. I would say these ones you don't have to paint. If there's though. one thing that James is short of in his life. Models. It's models. I often, I whenever I'm at James's, I look around and I go, not that much Warhammer here, really, actually. You know what this place there's, needs? There's some not, Warhammer. There's not Warhammer on every shelf. Like, what's going on here? You need there some is, more. There is a fair bit of Warhammer in mine. But these these models aren't to be painted. Uh, they are just purely... I'm actually impressed you found something you didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> They're not Games Workshop. That's the thing. True, it's a totally yeah. new manufacturer to play with. True. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, that they are they are really, really good. So, yeah, that was fun. It's a good weekend. Speaking of uh, abundance of miniatures, miniature of the year mm -hmm. is upon us. Yeah. What do we think? We all cast our votes. I don't have one like, off the top of my head, being honest, because there's so much stuff that came out this year. Well, well we were saying we were saying this like we 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 were at, when we looked at the list of all the models, it's it's absolutely staggering. Do you know you've got like big you know reveals one? as well, like to have like Farsight and like Angron and the Lion oh, in like the that. same quarter. What I was about to say was I said in the office the other day I think we were just doing some emails or something and I was like do you know Angron was only this year yeah like is it that, February yeah it was yeah. like February yeah. March time like that seems like so long ago I know they probably announced it last year I think uh, I think it's was it pre-Christmas we got a teaser? It's before it, Christmas. It got leaked, it. didn't it? It well. got leaked and then they but then they announced it like mm. pretty quickly so I think it maybe just feels like it's been a while. But yeah. it's to be fair, it came out in February, so it would have been announced just before Christmas or something anyway, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that was one that I read and I was like, I can't actually believe that was that that was this year. You, you might as well say your one because, you know, we already know. Well, yours is yours is a bit obvious as well. I mean, come on. Yeah, but mine has merit to it. Don't be trying to pull that straw. Mine, has, mine bit... has merit to it. Mine merit. has actual merit. I don't think there's anyone... Voting for Dante. Oh, that that isn't say. a Blood Angel. Was Dante this year boy? as well? It was, yeah. There's so many models this year. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. On any normal year, you would have been like, well, Angron's going to win. But then, yeah. oh, the Lion came out as well. And then you're like, oh, yeah. There's so many like centerpiece I models. I genuinely just think, I genuinely think, because I'm nowhere near as much of a Dark Angel fanboy as James is a Blood Angel fanboy. That's mm -hmm. very true. But even so, no one is. Even, <laughs> that's, even that's so, very true. <laughs> I just think that lion model is just one of the best models they've done in so long. It's I think good. it should should take it. However, however, um, one of the things I was going to say, which I'm quite surprised at, I saw um, Rosie, one of the painters on the team, post about that the um, the Fulgrim model wasn't on the list. You couldn't vote for it. Maybe That's it was, out now, isn't it? Yeah, but maybe it was yeah. like there was a cutoff date or something. Maybe they're doing it from a period to a period. I, don't I know. mean, it's maybe. been out for like yeah. a couple of months or something. There was other models from then, I'm sure. Maybe there's a reason why. But um, it's maybe, was quite, maybe Forge World isn't on the list in general. Potentially. Potentially, yeah. Well, it's not Forge World anymore, is it? It's, it's, um, I guess like, so. Maybe the, the time they're making the list. <laughs> expert resin, they yeah, yeah. call it now. So, yeah, I thought it was a bit weird. I didn't necessarily notice other... Bald world ones on there, I guess. So maybe, maybe that is it. But that would be a big shame, I think, because a lot of people would vote for that model. Yeah, yeah. it is a really good model. Um, Still not seen one in the flesh, so I can't really comment on it too much. No, me neither. But I just know that I know that a lot of people loved it. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. There are, oh, and also just all the all the cities of Sigma stuff. Yeah, I think any of the key things in that I would throw in there. But yeah. so, do you know what? It's a tough. It's a real tough vote being frank it's not like there's one standout model which for me is like I feel like normally every year there's an obvious one um, and there's not this year I would that's have what said, I was I saying, said, I was saying Angron, Angron, no but I'm saying yeah. I'm, I'm saying there's not this year but normally yeah, there true. is I mean yeah I think that removing all bias from the one that I obviously chose um, I, there are so many that 
that are really centerpiece standout models, which I think design wise, like I know it's fairly recent, but um, I think we spoke about it in one of the previous episodes, but that Necron, the Lord with the shit, the blade, the, 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 the that where it's trans, where it's moving or whatever yeah. it is mm -hmm. like that for me, just design wise is, is an amazing model. It's not like a huge model like Angron or, or like Lion or whatever, blah, blah, mm. but just for the sheer design aspect of it, I think there's it's difficult so to pick like a best model because it's like on what merit is it your favorite model or is it the one that you think is designed the best or yeah. the one that you think was like an important release for a faction that maybe hasn't had some love in a while or do you yeah. get what I mean? I, I, think, I think I always take it to be like your favorite, like the best yeah. designed model, the one that you think that's the best they could. Yeah. They couldn't have done that model any better. Kind yeah, of that's no. fair. That's the uh, way that I look at it. Well, you obviously went for the lion. So that's 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 yeah. the evidence. And the, look, Asriel's there as well. Asriel was very good. Asriel but, was um, good. I actually really liked Asriel. I think Asriel as a model is gonna stand the test of time, kind of thing. I think people are still gonna love that model in years to come. I think yeah. that's because it nods so hard to the original, which is a very good thing in my mind. Like I, mm. I'm not, there's no kickback on Noxon from my perspective at all. Like it, it genuinely is really, really good nod to the original and keeps a lot of the heritage, which I think is really mm. important when they do re redos of characters or iconic models. Um, so yeah, but so how did you feel about the Dante one then? Because that's um, not I've that's always, not a nod. So I think that's not a uh, nod to the original, really. Is it, it has a few extra bits and bobs and a few changes and things. Like for me, um, it's a different, different as a mode, model, as a model, like just looking at it as a model, I, I do love it, hundred percent. Like it, it ticks the boxes for me as a Blood Angels fan. Um, the real hard nerd Blood Angel fanboy in me, I wish that he had the original helmet and it did it wasn't in it or the, the death mask and it wasn't the death mask almost like welded to the front of a of a, of a mark 10 helmet i mm. wish it was i wish it was the actual because that for me is really really like obviously he's got an iron halo now on the jump pack but but the whole thing about him is he wears a death mask of sanguineous so i think it's a little bit of a shame to not continue that personally but again you can just do it i can just change the head or whatever if i really if it really bugs me that much i, I painted one with the new head and it's great so um so yeah but that for me is just the only thing but as a model in itself removing all the super super fanboy bias like um i think it's a great really great dynamic pose especially from him having such a fairly static model that he had for a very very long time to have such a dynamic such a commanding pose really suits the model and the character so so yeah for me it's the obvious choice um from both aspects um but i still think angon angon i think angon's probably my yeah, pick I being think, honest angon yeah. is good I think I still, I, the line still takes it for me. Angon didn't like blow my mind or anything. See, it did for me. The, 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 the way that it, same, same as Azrael, the way it nods to a lot of, a lot of people didn't like, didn't like it as in like, as in I saw lots of comments saying, oh, it doesn't look like him, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. But there's some, I put a post up on my personal social, like on my personal Instagram, like about a comparison to a bit of artwork. And it's, it's very similar. Like you can clearly see that Daz, when he designed it, looked, was looking at that specific bit of artwork and a couple of others. Like, you can really see a lot of the nuances of, of it. So I, I think it's the first, like Angron, when you see the full transformation from him, obviously as a 30K Primark all the way through to 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 where he is now, obviously in 40K, I think that it, for me, it's, I, I think it will be model of the year. And I'm going to say that now. I think that Angron definitely will. I think it probably will get it. Yeah, I, I'm very confident. Especially, especially when you look at the, um, the years previous and the models that tend to win. It says a lot about how much stuff has come out this year that it's not an obvious win for a model like that. Uh, no, it's probably feel it's this one probably feels the least obvious than than any of them. But in but previous years, like will. Magnus won model of the year when that came yeah. out, and then so did some of the other demon products. You got, you got yeah. so, like I said, we've gone around, we've already said it, but there was so much stuff come out in the time frame, and when you looked at that list and the options to choose from, it was just like, well, that's amazing, that's amazing, that's. Like there's so many there's on very there. few like out of what will be the main contenders i don't know if there's any really where i would be like oh that doesn't deserve it do you know yeah, what I mean? no, like, yeah, no, like, yeah yeah um i think that a lot of the big models this year have all kind of smashed we've got them, a lot of like small models as well with 10th like tyranny has got a huge overhaul tons of new marine infantry yeah well, like, I, I, I think you we, i think we're overlooking a lot of the ones that just that captivate people like for example i don't know if it's again i don't forgive me if i get this wrong but um isn't there like a crab a crab that came yeah, out with yeah. a monkey with a knife on the tail yeah. or stuff like that, like, that this so year? i don't know if it's but, this year or not but I, I think something like that i get what you mean though like, stuff like that's, that that's like a well, left that, that's field the one know. year the um the the what's the one with the guitar 
Oh, I the know one, the, orca, the, the rocker, wasn't it? The golf rocker. No, 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 no. The, the, oh, the, the, the noise children. marine. The noise, the noise marine. marine. Yeah. The noise marine. That one. one I was going to say the noise year. rocker. Yeah. Noise I, was, rocker. <laughs> I know I was nearly there, but yeah, yeah. The noise marine, like that one, one year. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, certain models like that sometimes get people. Going See, I, 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 I think something like that also has, has the, the clout to potentially take it. Like, because it, it, it's a model that's funny that like people really like warm to quite well. Like, I think there's a squid, there's a squid, isn't there? I think there's another, there's, there's, a, yeah. there's a squid model as well. There's all, all the underworlds. Yeah. And, like, like, I think, I think something like that. like that. Like I really like the underworlds one that's all the dogs and the guy. I think Saying that, that, I'm pretty sure the underworld stuff is listed like as a set together. So yeah. it's not like you're not voting for the, the crap. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah for the, for the, the, the release. Yeah. Sort of yeah. I also yeah. like one of my favorite releases of the year, while not like even in the running for like model of the year, but one of my favorite releases was the Stone Guard Vets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. What, the multi part or the ones that came with Leviathan? Uh, I only painted the Leviathan ones, but obviously like the multi part ones. The multi part ones. Default, like, yeah. Well, they're both great, but the multi part yeah. ones are. The and we've got the new Terminators as well. Right. I was about to say Terminators. That's quite a big. That could end up being a bit of a shot. I think if you. Shot to, winner. I, I think, it's a substantial yeah. release, like regardless of like how you like rank it against it other ages, stuff. Yeah. Those are like big releases. I just think year. you gravitate more towards picking a centerpiece model for mm, it, don't yeah, you? I yeah. suppose. But yeah. stuff like that, you know, is going to be around for like 10 years plus. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be like a core part of an army that someone builds five years from now. 100%. Well, if you're watching and you differ from what we think, then uh, chuck in the comments what you think is your model there. What did you vote for? That's something we always like to know what you guys think. Uh, so tell us in the comments. That'd be quite good to see. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at cstudios.co.uk. And just for you podcast listeners, you can get 5% off of your first commission with us by using code PAINT5. Now back to the show. Painting update. How are you getting on with the uh, with the Night Lord? Week three of the updates. Yeah, week three. Yeah, good. Uh, I am working on the cape at the moment. So yeah, I'm doing that. I'm, <laughs> He's uh, not getting far, is he? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done the... anything, mate. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping quiet. I yeah. haven't painted at all in the last two weeks. Yeah, no, I'm, no I'm working on the cape. Um, I left it for ages and I was just working on the front and then the sword and then I was like, right, I'm just going to start on the back because I felt like it was being left out and I was like, right, I need to divert some time onto this and some attention onto this so yeah just working on the cape at the moment um another quiet week then for the uh, not so much quiet i've just yeah i just just chucked on a couple of audio books mm. and got on with it really like yeah nothing crazy well, you've had some time off i've had some time off so yeah i, lo I, I spoke about it a little been... bit last week didn't i uh about my gd entry i've been prepping yeah, yeah i've been cracking on with so all the updates on that did some, did some NMM. The cycle is, is complete. Yeah. Yeah. As, uh, as Will Brightly put it, my redemption arc is complete. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, that what he said? That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had uh, I'd quite a lot of people. I put a whip up on Instagram and I got so many messages about that. <laughs> as, uh, yeah, as I was put to the flames for my uh, NMM hatred on the, on the hot takes episode. It's, just, it's the thing that we were talking about. Was it last episode or something where like you can't escape something that you've said on there now? I will say... It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And it's funny because we've spoke before about how like we don't consider NMM a technique. We consider it like a style. It's an amalgamation. An amalgamation of yeah. like if you can glaze and blend a power sword, you can probably do some NMM, right? Yeah. So it was interesting putting it into practice because I haven't done NMM in probably a year and a half at least. So we've had all this conversation since then. So it was funny revisiting it. And it was more enjoyable than I thought, but I think that's because I was doing it on cloth texture. Yeah. So not a full, yeah, it was interesting. Full armor. Yeah. Still, uh, I'm warm into it in small amounts, but <laughs> <laughs> would you? You still prefer true metallics? Overall? I think I think I've comfortably landed in. I really like the idea of it on like softer textures, but I'm mixing it with true metallics, and that remains to be seen how well that's going. So, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. toe in the line. So I'm going to do like true metallic armor. But because the NMM is on like a tabard on the front, I'm hoping that that will sell as like a different, it still looks gold, but it doesn't look like it's yeah, gold, yeah, gold yeah. weave as opposed to gold. Yeah, metal. exactly. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah. That's been that. Uh, should we have a look at some listeners' comments? Yeah, let's do it. This is a great username. Hive Mind Goes Om Nom says, 
I mean, that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That is quite a good name. We had uh, some good ones last week, but that's a good, that's, that's a brilliant one. Oh God. Uh, this is in regards to uh, what people do while they listen to the podcast. Still, oh, yeah. uh, still getting some, this is some genuine, late applicants for uh, genuinely one of my favorite things to hear about. There's not like an application date. To yeah. Sorry, you know, yeah. You could, if, if you, you want to send your application for what you do while you listen <laughs> to the show. If you're listening to this and you do some far out job, like, it's what, do, no, what, no, 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 but I don't even care if it's a far out job. Like, just knowing, like, do you know what I find funniest is forgetting the fact that they listen to the podcast because that's already like crazy to me. But the fact of these are the sort of jobs that you don't know exist and yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Right. Until yeah. someone tells me that, like, what they're doing is such a niche specific thing. I'm like, yeah. Right. Well, this, this is it. So now, now we have to ask the question if you're listening to this and you have some completely super niche job and you listen to the podcast. We need to know so we can find the most niche. I mean, we job. had the guy who inspects like fighter jets and stuff. That's that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, we talk about that on the podcast, or I can't remember uh, that might be. I got very briefly. I don't know. I can't. I can't get it up. But the um, I got a DM from a listener, and cut, oh now because I don't have it here, I don't have his name either. But yeah, he what was it? He um, he sort of inspects like Boeing. Is it F fifteen? F fifteen Eagles. Yeah. Well, like when they're after they're done, he inspects them to like he like QCs them basically, and they, he said it, t- it takes like half hour per like however much like square footage. Um. I mean, so he likes to put the podcast on while he's doing it, and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. <laughs> doing such an important job, and I'm going to put a bit of the base rim debate on. Okay, right. Hive mind goes on. Nom says. I work in the film and TV industry as an on-set technician, but I'm hoping to move over to being a screenwriter in the next year or so. I listen to slash watch you guys while I work on my scripts. Got to give a big thanks as listening to the podcast has reignited my love for modeling and painting. Even though I've never been big into painting for the 20 issue years I've collected Warhammer, I'm currently preparing a small Iron Snakes Force and a couple of AOS characters and an army of Skyros Dark Wolves with my own little twist on the color scheme and lore. There we go. I mean, nice. that's, 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 that's a lot of info, but what yeah. I'm going to say is Iron Snakes are a great chance. I was going to say, yeah, you're yeah. going to like that. I love yeah. the Iron Snakes. They're great. So Yeah, that's really cool. I love the idea of them like subliminally, like we say stuff and they're like, right, they're spitting it out in the, can in the script. We, can we maybe give like a, is there something we can ask that they work into a script? Can we like, is there a Jamesism or something that we can say, oh, can Del Boys Vindaloo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not I mean, of all the it. ones to choose, <laughs> that's that, that's, that's, that's that the best one. reason that the script doesn't get pulled. Because yeah. they're like, they're comparing things to Del Boy's Vindaloo. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. not maybe bad. we won't do that. Uh, you know when he goes through those, do you remember when you was, uh, he was at school, there'd be like those plagiarism like tests that like run your yeah. your essay for like a script. Yeah. It like comes up like paid perspective. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, PA86 says, on the matter of painting details to draw attention to faces and such, Darren Latham's Silver Skulls is a good example of great models with really well-painted details and simple armor that really stand out. Completely agreed. I'm following that route on my Blood Angel's successor as much as my skill allows. Love the podcast. Congratulations and greetings from Spain. Ooh. Pues, hola. Uh, gracias por oír al podcast. Uh, so yeah, I can speak Spanish. I, just thought, <laughs> I, I thought I'd drop that in. Um, I, I was about to like try, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I didn't even know where to yeah. start. No, so. I wanted to. I wanted to just drop that in there because it's it's great to hear that we have listeners, obviously, all over the world, and uh, especially from Spain, which is my half native country. So yeah, that's that's quite good. What I would say about that comment, though, um, yeah, very very much so. Like obviously, uh, Daz's um, Daz's Marine chapter. Uh, but it's it's very similar because to, to Paul Norton as well. Like, obviously, Daz's chapter and also Paul Norton's chapter as well. I've totally forgotten the name of Paul's. Um, She's like. Oh, this is totally not going to be it, but this is like Iron Ravens. Iron Ravens, that's it, yeah. Is so, it Iron Ravens? Yeah, it is Iron Ravens, yeah. So um, both what Daz has done with these Silver Skulls and also what Paul has done with his um, Iron Ravens is really good. It's using that 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 sort of main colour that's very quick and very easy to get on, which looks great um, off the bat. And then obviously adding nuances of tone and hue with like spot colours and things, which I think is brilliant. Um, there's like loads and loads of chapters you can do that with. Um, and yeah, like they're just, just, it's a really great way of painting armies quickly and, and to still have consistent, consistent quality as well, which is good. Just looked that up by the way, silver skulls, brown base room. Oh, for God's sake. It's gaming army. <laughs> 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 oh, next up. 
Chris Mason says, absolutely love the podcast. Don't have anyone to talk shop about painting with. So this is as close as I can get. Uh, two thoughts. Speaking of access, uh, in terms of getting paintbrush in places, I think it's when we speak about uh, glue models to the bases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, should the GW sculptors pay more attention to that when they design the models or how they go together? The cloaks and capes, especially, sometimes you paint a model and you think there's no way this person paints. <laughs> should we tackle that bit first? I think, I think there's just... Oh, oh, is yeah. there more to the comment after? Well, there's a second thought after. We'll hit this one first. I just, I just think that like, um, it's like we were saying, it's choosing choosing whether you want to attach to the base or not because of that access. And I think that that's the thing is like, just ask yourself the question, can I access that area of the model? And if the answer is no, then the obvious choice is to not not put it on. But um, I don't but, love the idea of like making things so over the top designed for painters that the model suffers from it, like a design that could have looked better. No, no, I agree. I, agree, I yeah. personally think their role designing the model is to design the best model. Exactly, yeah. Don't worry about how easy it's going to be for me to paint it. Because you'll always because find a way. That's a I thing, completely like, get that that thought process but when you break it down it's like if you implemented that I think like you say maybe the the quality of the models that we get would suffer a little bit yeah I think so but yeah like if you, if it's got a cape and you can't access it like, like the, the night lord that I'm doing now like I can't I can't access areas of the model because of the cape so it's off the base and it's it allows me to access it from all different angles and things so yeah um, I don't think that you should sacrifice design for, for ease of function I think being harder to do or make, having to think about the way you approach it is always just going to push you as a painter. And I think that's what is needed. So, so yeah. Okay. Uh, second part of that was second thought on bases. With my Imperial Fists, I can't be bothered to get basing colors on the yellow. Uh, too much hassle to fix. So I use a dot of super glue on the feet to glue the Marines to the bases. Then I base uh, with sand and prime them. After that, I snap them off the base and fully do the bases. Then using their footprints, I use plastic glue to get them fixed onto the base and their feet sink into the basing so you don't have to mess with pins. Keep up the good work. Uh, I like that because that's exactly what I do. Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, absolutely. that's actually a really good idea. I've never done it to that level before. I've always just been like, I'm either sticking them on and going with it or I'm leaving them off. Yeah, that's what I tend to do. Straight up genius. That's the best way. You can still do, because the one the problem is, is if you do base the whole, put the, put the sand across the whole base, you know, the, the contact point, point between the bottom and the and the base is 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 got that sort of like mattress of sand underneath it. So so the thing is, is like by just doing that, it's perfect. You can do the base properly, stick the model on, and it marries perfectly. So yeah. I said as well, if you need to do any tiny touch ups on stuff like that, that's what that GW texture paste is like yeah. perfect for. Yeah, you have like a tiny little gap where, like, say you broke the model off and it took just like a tiny bit of sand off around the edge of it, or it didn't like perfectly marry up. Yeah, rather than getting like your glue back out and your sand and like putting on a tiny little bit like just getting some of that texture paste and just using your brush and just getting it right in there in the foot the uh i saw a few comments potentially a little bit confused about the mention of uh texture paste last week and i think maybe because we didn't specifically say but a lot of people were saying like that they didn't like the texture paste because they don't like the colors of it or they prefer to paint their bases and stuff but i assume that anytime you'd mentioned that you you're painting over it or yeah, I you're so. adding I, stuff to it yeah, rather I, than using the whatever the colour is. It's yeah. painted, yeah. I just see it as like liquid sand. Like yeah. You, I put it on and then once it's dry, I paint over it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I've always painted over it whenever I've used the texture paste as well. I've never uh, actually kept sometimes I'll keep it as like the base and I'll just dry brush straight over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because they've just, got quite a lot of colours as well. So like if you're doing like the Sterling Mud one, Sterling Mud, yeah. it's already brown. So I'm not just going to paint it another brown. That's a waste of time. So I'll just dry brush over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good for adding variety of texture to bases. So yeah. Well, it's... speaking of texture paste, this is such a perfect segue. George Slade says, after all this base room chat, I'm considering running my texture paint all the way down the base edge as well, just to throw in a third option. We've seen it. Well, I was going to say, you laugh. We've seen it. <laughs> not only have we seen it, we've had the request for it. Yeah. From a client before. Or multiple. Some people... Some people do that. They they put the um, the texture paste all the way around the, the base room as well, which is a, a a thing that never entered our minds all, all these all so, this time of chatting about it. So that's, I'll be honest, I'm considering that quite heretical. So, um, well, that's that's like some cakes have got icing on the top, whereas well, they've icing you know all the way I around. Say, I say you lot want it to look like the the <laughs> the, the battleground. <laughs> So you put you put your money where your mouth is and you put your texture paint, put your sand and everything all around the background. Oh, what the sand? The lot. That's what I say. Uh, yeah. As I said. You put, put, put your money where your mouth is. 
You want it to blend into the battle on the battlefield so bad. Oh dear. Uh, Pete Wilco says, you know, you know, we spoke about the structure of like the company last week. We just wanted to give some like fair shout out to the yeah. rest of the team. Yeah. Uh, Pete Wilco says, whoa, 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 hold up. You mean we're getting painting advice from the lads making coffee in the office? <laughs> well, I I do spend I'd probably spend more time making coffee than painting, to be fair. <laughs> And yeah, we're definitely uh, we're, we're defi- definitely drinking a lot of coffee in this office. Actually, we're, we're, we're definitely an equal equal round making company. Like, yeah, we do yeah, share yeah, the we, we share, share those we share loads of of, uh, of making tea. George yeah. normally lines it up so like I, I'm convinced George hears the kettle and he knows that everyone's had a drink and then comes down and then and he asks. comes down and does one. <laughs> yeah. and he goes, "Anyone want a drink?" And we go, "Oh, I've just done one." Yeah, does actually happen. It, yeah, it does happen sometimes. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. But yeah, that's, that's ten, how it tends to happen. I did notice one extra comment that I wanted to that I wanted to raise. Oh yeah, okay. So I, little wild card I, I think, I think there was a bit of a mention from a certain Darren Latham about <laughs> nose piercings. Um, oh god, and, um, <laughs> I forgot about this. And uh, I will say this, um, Daz, when you get one, I'll get one. <laughs> so 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 that's that's kind of where that's going. I said I said. <laughs> Hundred, hundred thousand, hundred thousand subscriber special. Yep, we pierce your nose on air, stream. Yeah, on an episode. Yeah. yeah. For anyone who didn't see, it, I'm just going to read this out. Darren Latham says James is missing his nose piercing. On that was on one of the clips. We get, I would say, we get too many comments regarding nose. This piercings. is the second one we've mentioned on the show. Yeah, but we get more than that. We've had more. I than know. That. Yeah, I didn't weird. know it was a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah, apparently it is. No, well, I'm 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 very much a fan of tattoos. I've do you know what? I've never ever you've never ever, done piercings. Never done piercings. Never done a piercing. Piercings. Piercings. <laughs> piercings. Piercings. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we do that then. Hundred thousand subscriber special. You got to get us there first. Um, Who gets to do it? If we're going to do it on air, um, we have to get someone in. No, we'll throw a D six each, and no, we'll one just, of us. No, yeah. No, we'll get all Sparling in or someone like that. <laughs> No, the part of the fun is that we get to do it. <laughs> no. I love that we're talking about it as if it's actually going to happen. It's going to happen. Right, everyone subscribe to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> At no point did I actually agree. No, to... you just said it. You just said it. Yeah, no, we was no. all here. I'm going to edit that so it sounds like James. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No. Uh, finally, we have a review over on iTunes. Uh, five star, of course. Nothing, nothing less. Thank you very much. Uh, great mini painting podcast. This is such a fun podcast. Some really insightful comments on painting tools and techniques. Terrific advice on focusing and setting goals. Great recommendations on podcasts and a friendly atmosphere throughout. Really Sorry, enjoyed it. I can't believe we have the audacity to read that out after just rattling off like five, ten minutes about piercing James's nose, putting texture paste <laughs> around our base ribs, like all this other stuff. But yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, one wonderful yeah. review. That was thank from uh, Sydney Roundwood. So thank you very much. Uh, if you could please do us a favor, if you are listening on any of the audio platforms, or even if you're listening on YouTube, if you could give us a rating or review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, that would very, very much help us out. Well, I say, even if they're watching on YouTube, they've got, you've got an Apple account. Yeah. You've probably got an Apple You're probably account. watching this on YouTube on your iPhone. Yeah, right? exactly. So you can... The stats can, speak for themselves, yeah, you know? You can, you can you can leave a little review over there. Jeez. Well, if you are on YouTube, speaking of, uh, 76.2% of you are also not subscribed to the channel, but you listen to the show every week. So what are you doing? Please hit the red <laughs> button to subscribe to the channel. It helps us bring in these episodes for free every single week and you'll be notified when we upload a new one. Big news, tickets are now on sale for the Siege Studios painting classes for 2024. For over eight years, we've been running in-depth, hands-on classes across the UK, which has allowed us to create the perfect learning environment for improving your painting skills. With a variety of topics available, all our courses are taught by senior artists and feature practical demonstrations in a relaxed environment that welcomes interaction from you, discussions on theory, and an open Q&A session so you can ask that burning question you've had on your mind. You can even bring your models for feedback. To book now and reserve your place before tickets set out, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. I'll see you on a class soon. Right, topic for this week. We're going to be talking about uh, hobby goals again, I think. As we're coming to the end of the year, I thought it'd be a good chance to sort of speak about things we've done in this year, things we're proud of, things we want to focus on next year, maybe what the listeners should do next year, things we think painters should be focusing on, and uh, how to set some hobby goals, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, did you, before we get into it fully, did either of you have goals for this year? Golden Demon was like the big focus for me because I started mine at the end of last year. So by like January, my main focus for the year was like, okay, 
entering Golden Demon, like get my entry sorted. That was my like laser focus priority at the start of the year. Um, and then in terms of the second half of the year, I didn't have a ton planned really. Um, wasn't looking too far late into the year. Obviously, like every year, it's focus on what my weaknesses are as a painter and looking on how I can improve them. Yeah, I suppose yours was probably the same with GD. Uh, to an extent, yeah. And, well, no, because he was he was still doing his entry the day before. So it's not like he was super planned. Day before. Yeah, I'm not, day, I'm day not before. That morning. Yeah. The, the, the day off. Right. Yeah. Get it um, right. I, no, I meant more. Well, it was still, just because he didn't plan well was for that it, like it a, was still one of his goals. Was that something you set at the start of the year? Like, getting ready for that? Uh, to paint for it, yeah, 100%. But then, obviously, that kind of changed as the model that I've always wanted came out finally. And, and like, oh, that's true. Because oh, it only okay, came yeah, out yeah. a little while so, before, didn't it? So, yeah. So, like, I had something in the works, but then, obviously, that dropped. And I was like, right, well, that's... Had you started painting something else then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been... Well, I've had, like, a diorama that I wanted to do for a long time. Like, just I've been dabbling with it, doing bits and bobs and here and there. Um, well, and that's it, the point. Because I remember seeing... I'd started it. Something else that you... Yeah, there was. There was. I, I, I always have a few. I have. Or I always have a few projects on hot plates. Just, just yeah. go ticking over, you know. But, but, um, but yeah. Then, then he came out, and I was like, right, well, I've, I've got to paint that. Um, so yeah. But no, there's. I mean, I think personal, personal, like New Year's resolutions for me, I don't really do. But like, um, but when, but I don't when, think it's a New Year's resolution. Not like That's a New Year's resolution, but at, like, but, but I, I think for like, what I'm trying to say is that like. My my thing for going from twenty two into twenty three was I want to paint more than I painted that year, and I think that's that's always the thing that comes to mind is like I want to paint more than the year I've painted previously because I know that I don't get as much time to paint as I used to. Did you achieve that? Uh, yeah, I think I did because like we like we've done I've done quite a few bits and bobs this year. Um, you know, obviously for work, uh, and I've done quite a lot of personal stuff as well. So I have I do think I've actually physically painted more than I have a previous year for once, which is good. Um, I'll tell you what technically between us we both painted uh, an army and that's yeah. more than we do most years yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean obviously the Viathan was a big thing like we obviously managed to get the Viathan done to a really high standard which was good um, uh, I painted an orc in like a really quick time frame I painted um, Snick Rock really quickly which I was really happy to do um, was that this year? that's what like you said of Angle. I can't believe that was this year yeah, yeah. Snick Rock was this year um, yeah, and then a couple of, obviously uh, getting to paint. Did a, a few of the Marines as few well. Of the Marines, yeah, and then uh, did your famous Ultramarine uh, successor? Oh, the Genesis chapter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no longer. It's been subbed from one football team to another. I love that you said that as if it wasn't a bow to start with. <laughs> yeah. As if he's like changed kit. <laughs> Not so much kit; yeah. it's just changed badge. But yeah, <laughs> he but, just um, embraced his identity. Yeah, embraced who, he really, he embraced who he really is. It's yeah. like going from like one British high school to another. You just like. Take you take off. the badge off of your blazer yeah. and you're yeah. like, so the new one. So the new one back on. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, uh, yeah. So painted a few few character models uh, for my, and that I think that leads nicely into 24, what I, what I am going to be focusing on 24. Um, so for painting, obviously painting more, which is what I want to do. But I've I, I've had a few burning desires to paint several bits and bobs over, over the last couple of weeks or so, actually. Like I mentioned about Admech, there's a couple of things admech wise I want to paint just for, just to get that, scratch that itch. But I do want to do it and i guess i'm going to kind of lock it in now by saying this but i do want to add to all the the, the couple of characters i've painted and do a full blood angel primaris army to a very high standard so that's Ooh. that's what i want to do that plus also i really really add who works obviously in the office he he's a massive fan of imperial guard and i've been watching him do on his lunch breaks like he's still legion and i've got i've always had a soft soft spot for still legion Armageddon because of Tycho, Third Company, Hive Tempestora, uh, Hell's Reach by Aaron Dembski Bowden. So I've always had that's one of my favourite parts of like the the Warhammer Forty K lore and narrative is like Armageddon and Hive Tempestora. So I'm going to do a Full Blood Angels Primaris Army. I'm going to pick a unit and I'm going to work on that every month. That's what I want to do. And also I want to do a, a gaming because I actually probably want to move back to gaming a little bit. I want to do a gaming Steel Legion Army. So with brown base rooms. So, uh, so, so that's, so that's, can't believe it. That's selling me out. So that's, that's, so my, my blood angels will have black base rooms and my steel legion will have brown base rooms. Right. Quick, quick rapid fire, like list. What sort of units are you immediately thinking you're going to get for each of those armies? Uh, blood angels, loads of assault intercessors with jump packs. I'm just going to call them assault marines. Um, uh, death company, uh, a couple of dreadnoughts and that's it really. Cause I'm, I'm, uh, well, I've got a, I've got quite a few that I want to paint out. I've got I've got a backlog of CS models that I really should paint. He's got so, a full cabinet of Dante's. 
Yeah. So full squad yeah. of them. So Astarath, Astarath, Sanguinor. Um, uh, there's a chaplain that I want to do. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's basically that. So that, that's what I want to do. For, that's my whole thing for next year. And then I've already got loads of Steel Legion. So all the Lehman Russes you can think about, um, various variants, our Mars Alpha patterns, uh, uh, Armageddon pattern basilisks, like Manticores, Sentinels. Like uh, all, there's got, a lot of that stuff metal the old, the Steel Legion stuff. Yeah, it's all metal. Yeah, yeah it's all metal models. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm really gonna try. One of my favorite, one of my favorite accounts on Instagram for Steel Legion is a guy called, uh, it's, a, it's a guy who's named Sam, and he's got his account is literally at Steel Legion or the Steel Legion. Like, I will put a link in below because I really love his work. He's got amazing, amazing Steel Legion army. And it, I never I see stuff done by it. I'm always like, I really want to do a Steel Legion army. So with him, and then also seeing Adam's work, I'm just like, I've got to do it. But what I am gonna try and do is within the army. I'm going to try and paint things to the best of my ability and hopefully pick some of those things to maybe enter into competitions. So that's basically the plan. So I get double use out of the things I'm doing and it pushes me to paint as well as I can for my army. That's, that's the plan. So I think doing, especially picking an Imperial Guard thing, gives you a lot of scope to pick some cool competition stuff as well, actually. Yeah. Well, I, I'm the Steel Legion stuff could that some of that can look really cool. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how like, I think I don't know how much I want to push into like doing that at a high level but potentially some characters and stuff but I really I just want to get an army of them done because they're yeah. some of my favorite guard models and um and and yeah uh yeah, yeah but that's hopefully it's, I'll just be able to do some of my blood angel characters for GD and maybe do like an A team of blood angel characters as an entry or something like that potentially I don't know. That'd like, be cool. Yeah. Um for me I had like I set myself like mental goals this year and didn't hit any of them. And I, <laughs> I hardly painted this year, to be honest. My, my, like, my focus, focus was just sort of elsewhere. And, and the, even the difference between like the beginning of the year to the end of the year with how I feel about painting has completely changed. Like I think I was, towards the beginning of this year, I think I was like fairly burnt out. Not even that I'd been painting that much, but just fairly not wanting to spend like my spare time on it. Um, didn't have any, but then, but going into the year, I had set myself some goals where like, I really wanted to get, I wanted to get back into gaming. So I wanted to paint an army and make sure I had an army. But ju I think I just set myself goals that were just too unrealistic for me. Like I ended up, I had a 2,500 point Necrons army that I built, fully built, fully primed sprayed the whole thing like all at once and we've spoken about like batch painting before and um once i'd sprayed it i i just didn't want to look at it like i was literally <laughs> like i spent like so much time in a short amount of time kind of thing like a, a lot of can i'd spent a lot of time looking at it do you know what i mean and like doing it all at once like a full army that's kind of like what I said about, do you want to do the thing or do you want to have the thing? Exactly. I yeah. wanted to have the thing. I didn't want to do the thing. Yeah. Like I wanted to have the thing. There was a couple of characters that I really wanted to paint. But other than that, like... I, I, That's I, where yeah. motivation struggles, right? Because you don't actually care about doing it. There's zero enjoyment in doing it. Yeah. You just want to get to the end goal as quickly as possible. Exactly. So I hit proper hit a wall there. And like that negative experience I think then just made me like I didn't even want to set my painting desk for a little bit like I just couldn't be bothered yeah Um. so and then as we got on we started doing this halfway through the year like this has really helped me get like excited about painting again Um. so I definitely want it this year I want to just I want to go like easier on myself with in terms of goals like I think I just want to make sure similar to what James said, really, like I'm painting more than I did this year and I've got some models that I'm happy with at the end of it to, to show for it kind of thing. Um, and also making sure that I'm enjoying the process when I am painting because that's where I've gone wrong before, I think. Like like I say, with the I, I wanted the army. I didn't really want to spend time painting the army. Um, so... Yeah, starting with the Tau Kill team that I built. That's all ready to go now. That's like on the on the painting desk, ready to ready to be painted. So that'll be like the holiday project. Then go into the next year. Christmas um, Christmas chill model. Yeah, the Christmas Christmas chill project. Um and I've got like a primary captain as well that I've had um B 
built for ages. That you know the the limited plasma pistol. Oh, well, such a good model. Yeah, yeah. limited plasma pistol uh, power fist one. Yes, um, got that in a trade with Will actually. Oh, really? you mentioned earlier, um, and that's just been built and sat on my desk for like, I th- yeah, it was like the year that that model came out, whenever that was. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my my easing myself back into it and then just kind of making sure that I'm painting a bit more regular than I, than I was. But I think that's a good thing to, I, I think it's a good thing to learn is that you don't have to set yourself these like incredibly lofty, unrealistic goals. If you're enjoying the show and you want to get even more painting tips and techniques from us here at Siege, head over to our Patreon. With the Siege Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a catalogue of over 250 PDF and video tutorials covering a variety of techniques from our foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses and much more. We also have a tier just for you podcast listeners to help support the show. So if you want to take your paintings to the next step and make the most of your hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash C studios. Something that I want to try and do is it, 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 just to touch on to what you're saying is that I think trying to guarantee painting a little bit in some way that every day or every other day is, is something that I should have tacked on. Like I, I don't, I often have, periods of time we don't i think like exactly what you're saying like painting more trying to do it every day a little bit or every other day a little bit will automatically put you in a better position mm. so that's something that I've, i just want to throw in cause yeah yeah fair i think for me interestingly it's kind of the opposite of both of you so i've been full-time doing commissions for three years in varying levels of madness that's been like some years that's meant like tons of armies other years that's meant just turning over a lot of projects and this year, like we started the pod, I've started in the office and all that sort of thing. So in the last couple of months has been the first time in a long time where I've taken my foot off of the gas. Not necessarily because because when I was doing the commissions, I wasn't really painting for myself like at all. And that's why I had to set myself like the goal of prepping for GD this year was because I had such little time to work on any personal stuff at all. It was like, okay, I'm going to set some personal hobby time. That was like my goal for this year. And I think next, next year is going to be kind of similar because I think Next year is going to be the first like year where I'm not going crazy on commissions. Like I might I might do the odd couple here at work, but generally speaking, it's mainly just going to be like I'm going to start painting for myself again. And I haven't really got a goal in terms of like volume or output, but obviously I really enjoy painting for display. So I'm hoping that you know Golden Demon in 24, I can chart with a couple of entries rather than just one. And later on into the year after the comp's gone, I'm not just like done waiting for the next one. Like I'm just going to keep on painting for myself. And I might do some gaming projects. I've got my Sons of Horus Army that's been not even built, not even like not even like your Necro Army. Oh, so you didn't even get as far as that. Didn't even get as far as that. I've painted four tack marines, but there you go. There's my small win. Yeah. I got further than you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I painted I painted I painted some of them to completion. I painted I painted one character. I, but, one character and one infantry model. I painted one character and four infantry models. And my infantry model made it onto the uh Warhammer hobby clinic thing or whatever it was. Well, okay. So is that worth three points? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's probably my goal for next year. Yeah, just to uh, focus on myself a bit more. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I've never struggled to find time to paint or to paint enough stuff. It's just doing the right thing with it. Do you get what I mean? So rather than working on like a big army project or something that doesn't particularly interest me, or working on you know models for clients, which I absolutely love doing, but it's gotten to a certain point for me where I'm okay. I do actually want to start like painting some of my own stuff because I feel like I'm really improving as a painter and I've kind of got nothing to show for it. Like my cabinets are still empty. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, this is the best thing I've painted. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's touch on what you said then. So like how the listeners can set goals. I think what we wanted to talk about was the achievability of it, right? I think so many people suffer when at the start of the year, they're like, New Year's resolution, I'm going to do this army, like you said or whatever. And then you've set yourself such a mountain to climb that you get like two steps up that mountain and you think, yeah. oh, what's the point in going on? I also, one thing I would say is like, just to get out of it being a New Year's resolution thing, I know for ease we're talking about like, oh, painting for the year and blah, blah, blah. Like, um, like start now. Mm. Like don't wait till January. That's like, so start, true. Start yeah. now. Tomorrow never comes. Start yeah, now. Start yeah. now. Because like we say, you've got the Christmas period and hopefully you've got some time off work as well. And that's such a good place to like, just have a chill, take the other uh, distractions. You know, some people, you'll have more distractions because you'll have family staying over or whatever. But um, but if you don't have to worry about work for a few days or like or a week or whatever, um, 
even even planning it or or coming up with your goals if you start that now you'll be in a way better position rather than um, say one day say day one that's the way go. to do it. That's a good one, isn't it? That's, it. that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. That's, that's not even a Jameson. That's just a nice quote. Yeah, that's a podcast yeah. quote if I've ever heard one. We should we should start a podcast. <laughs> we should start a podcast. <laughs> and I think, because I, I do want to get away from it being all New Year's resolutions and da, 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 and stuff like that. However, we do need to come up with our calendar. We do. We'll finalise that. Well, let's, let's announce it on the Christmas episode for next year. So on the Christmas episode for this year, we'll announce it for next year, I think. Potentially, it'll either be next episode or the episode after we will announce the full pain perspective painting calendar. <laughs> so I think I think what we do get your get your final submissions so in. I, I have something that I'd like to table that I think we could do quite fun, quite well. All right, doesn't have to be a full model, and I just want to caveat that. So for each of the months that we decide next year, the faction for that month, we have to paint something of that faction. Now that could be a head or a weapon, or a backpack, or it could be a bit of detail or something like that, but we paint something of that faction in that month, and we show and talk about it on the show each month. So it yeah. adds a little bit. Yeah. So then, that, then the month. listeners can paint along. And, yeah. and Do you know what would be really cool something. as well? If between the three of us, we each paint like part of a model, we have a <laughs> sub-assembly <laughs> each, and we like mega don't, sa- don't be saying that, because Joel, be, Joel will be going, can't do the sub-assemblies. That's my worst nightmare. I have to paint a sub-assembly, <laughs> and then it has to get put next, to, like, attached to the things painted by two professional painters. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. What you should do is you should paint a full model and then let me do the face. And then we'll... <laughs> yeah, no, that was my thought process. Is like, it's say, let's just say, for 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 sake of it, let's just say it's it's March March McGregor, whatever. We paint something ultramarine, or yeah, yeah, hundred like, percent, or, like, yeah. or like a helmet, yeah. or like a and we can or a shoulder, or whatever, like blah, blah blah. Like maybe that can be a little community challenge as well, like on the hashtag paint perspective on Instagram. Everyone can uh, we could just do it for the month, as well. yeah, yeah, that'd be quite yeah. cool. Yeah, well, well, like, it doesn't have to be a full model because then the commitment, the investment, and the commitment doesn't have to be like this this massive thing. And like, then it's an achievable hobby goal. There it, we it go. Is, it is. We go. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll establish those rules when we when we announce the full calendar. I think. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. So I think another another way to 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 get ready for like the new year, so to speak, is is the thing that I always talk about, which is your painting journal. And I think within that, you can plan projects for the year. You can plan goals and achievements and things you want to do. And I think it gives you. I always. I do like, think actually it is good to document stuff because I'm I'm sure there's oh, been so many times where com- I've said he's coming around to it. He's coming around to it. <laughs> but I think I think as well. This is like holding yourself accountable in some way, and also not only that, just like not forgetting. Because I'm sure I set some goals at the start of the year, and I just completely forgot what yeah, they but were. We all, yeah, but we all do that. I yeah. yeah, but, but that would be nice because then at the even like at stages throughout the year, you can just quickly flip back and be like, oh, what steering yourself back on course. And I think that could be an ongoing thing as well because I don't. The thing I don't like about New Year's resolutions is it's like this thing you set in January, and it's supposed to last like the whole year. Because like, what if you achieve that by like February? Yeah. It's like now what? So you, I feel like setting goals should be a continuous thing that you're always looking to do. Yeah. I mean, this is the I think the ep- oh, episode. 29 or 30. No, no, no. I mean, uh, I was going to reference an old episode, like literally like two or three or something, mm-hmm. where we spoke about, you know, small, medium and large goals and constantly reevaluating them and constantly changing them and stuff. That's definitely something to consider. Like, But I do, I do think there is something about writing them down and having boxes to tick. Like I know full well, like even my day-to-day at work, like if I didn't have a to-do list to work through every day, I, I think I'd, struggle getting all the things that i do get done done because it's not the physical ticking off of those things so i think when you transfer that to like painting and to like your journal and having a page that as i said like you can have your first couple of all your pages which are project planning but having one that is like this year's this this year's things that i want to achieve or this year's things it kind of shows you a bit of a metric of where you're at and where you about where you want to be so you know i i'd advocate doing that hugely i think that it's again it's one of I think one of the most important things as a miniature painter that you could have is is a painting journal. I genuinely mean that. Um, yeah, I, I, I back it wholeheartedly. I'll probably keep mine digital, I think. But I do do appreciate the Fair. the sentiment. How do you feel about the whole like making yourself accountable? You know, sometimes people will like share their goals with their friends so they've got like other people to keep them accountable. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I think that can be extremely beneficial. Like that... I don't know if it's like a personality thing. Some people it works better for others or what. But for me, if I had someone like 
asking me like, oh, how are you getting on with that? Like doing this, like to a certain extent, like if I was more in, I'll, I'll definitely, as I'm, as I'm going to be painting more, I'll definitely be thinking, oh, like I better have something to talk about. Do you know what I mean? Or I better yeah. have something like more. Like, Gets to Sunday night and you're like, oh God, George is going to be asking me what I've been painting this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I just have to say nothing again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, this is like our accountability in a way, but I think having, yeah, friends that you, even just in like a painting group or, or I, something I was, like that, like, like just like, a, a group chat or a Discord or something. Or the Siege Studios Discord. Yeah. Oh, nice I, I was literally going to say, start a painting group in 2024. As in, you have a gaming night. Have a have for every gaming night you have, have a night that is sitting around the table with your mates painting. That will give you way more achievement and spur you on and you'll feel like you come away from it with something more tangible than a game's great don't get me wrong like I think if you know if you love gaming then even if, you, even if you're not even if you don't game like it doesn't have to be like a substitute for gaming no no like, no like, I know I get that but I know a lot of people do up. like gaming but what I was, I was saying is like I think start having if you've got painting friends that are quite local to you organise on a weekend or maybe a weeknight or whatever organise a painting evening where you get around, you get some food in, you know, uh, if you drink, get a couple of beers in or whatever, blah, blah, like, and, and, and just sit around painting and, and maybe within that you can set yourself a challenge, right? We're all going to paint a character for our army tonight, or we're all going to paint a character model, or we're all going to paint a vehicle or like, you know, I think that helps hugely to spur you on. It's something that I've found personally really helpful in the past with things. Um, and if you hear that and you're thinking, I don't really have that group of friends, like I said, I did probably a moment ago, but there is the Siege Studios Discord yeah. and on there, there is a voice channel. And if you haven't got any hobby friends, maybe IRL, and you want to do things virtually, you could definitely plan something like that. And yeah, yeah. I, that's something that I absolutely love doing is sitting in the audio channel on there while I'm painting. And it's like you're hanging out with your friends, but yeah. you get to do it from the comfort of your own yeah. home. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you can meet some new people. Yeah. I, to be honest, like, I've never really done that. I've never really painted in a group necessarily, like actually painted, like in the physical. Like, yeah, like yeah, everyone yeah. sitting around. Or even been on like a, the phone or or something while I'm painting because I don't know if I don't know if I'd be able to concentrate as well on painting if I've also got to have a conversation. Do you know when, what I mean? When you're just sitting talking and you're just sitting and you're you're focused on the painting and you're just talking to people as you're painting, you don't really you don't really divert attention from that onto the communication with people. You 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 focus on the painting. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just always thought... That's kind of like the same thing, though, where some people are like, oh, I couldn't possibly listen to an audio book while I paint. But for some people, that works. Like yeah, yeah, well. that's yeah, what yeah. I mean. Like, um, I think that's why I like an audio book or something is because like that's just going to happen. I don't yeah, need to yeah. do anything. Yeah. It's just, it's just got, you know, happening. Um, I find it depends what I'm doing. Sometimes when I like really need to like knuckle down and concentrate, I will, I will not be able to do that. If I'm in, like just prepping a model or I'm just like, you know, cleaning the airbrush out, do you know what I mean? Like scenarios like that. Yeah. If I'm at like, if, especially if I'm at the earlier stages of a project, I find it pretty easy to do because I can just sit in base coat kind of mindlessly. True. Yeah. I guess I could do stuff like that. I'm thinking of like edge highlighting yeah. and, and glazing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that would be much easier. What would you two recommend for someone going into the new year? If they were going to spend the next year improving on something, what would you recommend they focus on in order to get the biggest possible improvement in that time. So like over the course of a year rather than like one little thing yeah. to tick. Yeah. Like this is what you should work on for the duration of the year. Yeah. I'm going to pull line one of James's and him sheet, which is pressure management and controlling brush. I think if you dedicate enough time to that, every time you paint and every time you sit down, you will see massive improvement in your brush ability and also just in in what you actually execute and how happy you are with what you've executed. I think that's one of the key fundamental things. It's the direct thing that puts paint from the palette onto the model. So you, you should focus on that as a constant working thing. Uh, uh, and, you know, and if you don't, if you've never thought of that before, if you've not really put too much effort and thought into that in your painting and you're looking for something new to start in the year, I think that's one thing that will give you a really good foundation for everything else you do. So, yeah. Mine is kind of, coincidentally sort of phase two of what james said line is, two him sheet <laughs> it's focus on rather than looking at like the bigger picture of a model when you're painting focusing on being as neat and tidy as possible and consistent in like when you're doing your highlights they're the same thickness 
on this part of the model was there or on this part of the model. Mm -hmm. Just being generally neat. I think that if you practiced, for example, painting like, I know it's a cliche thing, but if you practice painting like 10 Space Marine legs, I think that you would get better than painting like 10 random models. And that's something we've spoken about before. I think just focusing on being neat and sitting down when you're painting the model rather than looking at it as like this big picture thing of like, I'm going to do this like, uh, this flare because I'm going to do like this technique, slap, chop, NMM, whatever it is. Rather than focusing on some grandiose thing, just being like, I'm going to paint this model really, really neat. And I'm going to try and make it neater than the one I did last time. And next week you go, I'm going to try and paint it even neater than that one. Because we've spoken before about sitting and like batch painting 10, model, 10 of the same model in a row to try and get like sharper and neater and see improvement. But even if you do that as a more grander scale over the course of a year, if you just focus on every single time you're painting, I'm going to be as neat as I can, as precise as I can. Even something as small as that, because you've got that long time period to do it and you haven't got to necessarily see massive gains straight away. Come December, you'll look at models you painted in January and you'll think I've improved so much. Yeah. 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 Nice. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, please leave it in the comments below on YouTube or if you are listening on any of the audio platforms of your choice, please go over to the Instagram at Siege Studios and send us a direct message and we will hopefully answer it on the show for you. This week we have Mr. Elegant Gamer says, uh, I've got a question for you all. What would you say is your favorite GW centerpiece model? Uh, so many good models in the AOS line. Curious if any of them win. My, there is, there, there's... I had a quick think about this mm. and there's almost definitely some that I'm forgetting or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, there's loads that like come to mind. So like even within iOS, like I've always liked the Alario model. Yeah, I think that's, that's cool. phenomenal. Techless model's really good. I think it, as more of a modern one, we've actually already spoken about it on this episode. Um, it, it's iOS on a technicality. Is it Demons? The Bellacore model oh, okay. for me yeah. is probably my favorite, like current big centerpiece model. I think it's phenomenal. It's funny that you said AOS on a technicality because mine is also AOS on a technicality. Because <laughs> uh, mine is also not a new one, but Keeper of Secrets for me is just. Yeah, yeah. I think something about that model. That's, oh, yeah. that, yeah, that's a phenomenal one, actually. Thinking about that. And because that's a kit that has a couple of different variants in it as well. Yeah. There's a bit of, bit of flexibility yeah. there. But I think. Um, it, it, non non AOS like sticking with 40k in terms of centerpiece models not a huge one but I think uh, Triumph for St. Catherine is great yeah I really that is, like that that is a very good just idea. for the pure insanity of it being like nine models on one, nine, nine one character models on one base or whatever base. it is yeah um, yeah but I think Bellacore for me in, in, in recent years anyway um, I just think that's an incredible model I will remain within 40k and I will go with the big bad Gazgrel Mag Uruk Fracker. <laughs> because he I do love Gaz. That's yeah, a good one. Because that model, to see it from the second Ed one go to the the in between one, which is the metal chunky mega armored one, and then go to the brand new one. That model for me is just an instant icon model within the the, the range. Um and it's got so many cool little quirky little bits, like the, the the little buttons on the back of the suit as if he has to get wound up and work, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's just some really cool little details. On stuff like that's so fun because yeah. you don't necessarily notice it until you're painting it as yeah. well. I didn't know he had that on it until I was yeah. painting well, just, it. It's, it's, all the, it's all the little parts that make him. Like, even the lights inside the collar, like you don't really see them, but like, you know, they are genuinely very, very, very good. Um, but yeah, like I, I think Gaz is probably one for me. I think Gaz is his top, top draw. Hobby Hack, this is the closing segment where we share a little Hobby Hack with you, a little uh, tradition at the end of every episode. I've got one this week. I'm back again. Mm -hmm. So this is when I was doing my GD piece on here that I've just started. I, tried... I was about to make a joke and be like, he's learned some tricks while he's been doing his, <laughs> while he's been doing his competition piece. So I wanted to try for the first time doing like flagstone, like cobblestone bases. I'm... I'm terrible at basing. Like it's not. I, I like doing like plain, simple stuff. I enjoy doing basing, but it's not something that I consider myself like particularly good at. Especially when it comes to scratch building. <laughs> especially when it comes to scratch building stuff, and not just like using like product with your sand or bit of GW terrain or whatever. So, I uh, following the tutorial, I got some mill apart and I like rolled it out flat and I like cut little stones out of it, put it on the base. And I'd done that, and I was pretty happy with it. And then. 
you know when you're not happy with something in the moment and then like, like four days later you're like this, this isn't it this is not it chief so what I'd done was because they was just a bit too thick that was my main like gripe with them and it wasn't like very flat like they were sort of almost sort of bowed where I would like roll them out it was like thicker in the middle and like a bit flatter on the edges almost so what I'd done was I got uh, it was already on a, like a plinth and I literally masked it all off around the edge put it in a vice and I got like a you know, like a wood plane <laughs> yeah. and I literally like shaved it down flat yeah. but by that point I had this just like perfectly flat level nice piece of milliput that I could just start carving into so this made me think basically basically it's just a hack for just like doing flagstone bases or whatever instead of sculpting with the miller part like while it's still soft like all logic would tell you to do yeah if you roll out like between like two bits of baking paper like as if you was making like some sort of festive cookies or whatever i ice him for your cake <laughs> there you go let it set and you've just got this like wafer of miller part stick that down to your base you can just get your hobby knife and you can just start carving at it it's going mad and it like a scalpel blade just like flows through it like perfectly and you can just start like carving bits out as Could if I, it's stone. It looks great. Could I tack something on? Go that? for it. If you get some silicon chocolate moulds off of Amazon, I know you've got to buy something for it, but if they're really cheap. Some liquid plaster, you pour that in and it makes the perfect sort of tiles for basing. Once they're set, you just break them up with a hammer and you get some really, really cool broken tile slabs as well. And again, it's perfect thickness and everything. Really I'm getting cool. some throwbacks to that hack we done where I was smashing a slate with a hammer. Yeah, well, I didn't have a very good time with that. No. Uh, the, <laughs> smashing the slate with a hammer. So yeah. I'll um, be careful with this. Yeah, but, give it a try. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Uh, if you do want to get any more uh, tips from us here at Siege Studios, uh, please consider joining us on Patreon. And we also have a tier just for you podcast listeners to help support the show. We will catch you very soon next week. 